I love liquids. They're just so simple. We can talk about a liquid mass flow rate in tons per hour and simply use the density to convert it to a volumetric flow rate in cubic meters per hour with ease. Liquid density doesn't vary much with temperature and pressure. If I have water at 1 bar and 20 Celsius, it has a density of 998 kilograms per cubic meter. If you took that water and compressed it all the way to 1000 bar, the density would increase to 1040 kilograms per cubic meter. If you then took that 1000 bar water and heated it up all the way to 150 degrees Celsius, the density of that liquid water, it's still liquid because of the ridiculously high pressure, the density would drop to 957 kilograms per cubic meter. In all instances, if you were doing rough calculations, you could probably get away with assuming a density of water of 1000 like we normally do. With liquids, when we do mass balances, we can pretty much get away with doing volume balances too. Now let's look at a gas that is a topic that you've probably been hearing loads about recently. Cue cheesy music and corporate propaganda. Modern societies will undergo paradigm shifts in how they exist, while the way modern economies function will change. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. At Chevron, we're exploring ways to expand our hydrogen fuel capabilities to help make heavy-duty transport lower carbon. The world of energy is changing rapidly. BP is facing this dual challenge and wants to be part of the solution. This technology utilizes electricity generated from wind and sunlight to produce hydrogen through electrolysis. Above all, hydrogen is needed to produce fuel in refineries. Hydrogen, especially the green flavor, is a gas discovered by brave corporate executives simultaneously about two to three years ago. It has a proven track record as a transportation fuel, and the reason I'm speaking about it is because it is a very light gas. At 20 Celsius and 1 bar absolute pressure, if you had 1 cubic meter of hydrogen, you would have just 80 grams of hydrogen. If you had a cubic meter of the stuff, but instead it was at 1000 bar, you'd actually have 50 kilograms of hydrogen. If instead it was at 150 degrees, you'd only have 39 kilograms. The compressibility of gases is why working with volumes when it comes to gases is not as simple as it is in the case of liquids. Nevertheless, we still need to work with volumes and volumetric flow rates. And that is why we talk about normal cubic meters. Normal is how much you'd have if the gas were at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere which is pretty close to one bar, so in my day-to-day -day, I equate them for convenience. Remember, this is always absolute pressure. Now it's likely that you learned about standard temperature and pressure, or STP, like I did at school. And if I try and remember what we learned, it was 25 degrees, or maybe 20. I asked a couple of people who went to South African schools like I did, and they all came back with different numbers. And if I consult Wikipedia, it tells me that all these values are equally correct or perhaps incorrect. Just have a look, three different standards organizations that would be applicable in Europe, EN, ISO, and DIN, can't agree on whether the temperature should be 20, 15, or zero. If you're from across the Atlantic, you're probably using standard cubic feet per hour, which is at one atmosphere, or 14.7 PSI absolute, and checking the temperature on Wikipedia will leave you just as confused. Hey, look, there we have normal and standard cubic meters at 0 and 15 degrees again. Or was it meant to be 20? The answer to what are the correct reference conditions frankly bores me to death, and it is simply a good habit you should develop to clearly state right up front what reference conditions you use when you're talking about gases. There are three things I want you to take away from this video if you've never had to work with normal cubic meters per hour. Number one, compressors, or anything where the gas pressure changes, which is pretty much everything. If I have one normal cubic meter of hydrogen and I pass it through a compressor, 
I get one normal cubic meter of hydrogen coming out of the compressor. If I have one normal cube of hydrogen going into a pipe, I get one normal cube of hydrogen out of the pipe. In each case, the actual volume will be different in and out because the temperature and pressure are different in and out. But that is the point of using normal cubic meters. It's like a pseudo mass unit that allows us to do balances without worrying that gas density is changing throughout our process. If I want to know the actual mass of hydrogen I have, then I can use the ideal gas law. Because one atmosphere is pretty low pressure and zero Celsius or 273 Kelvin is a relatively high temperature for a gas, gases will tend to behave themselves at these conditions, so you can get away with using the old PV equals NRT. I replace the number of moles with mass over molar mass, rearrange, plug in the ideal gas constant, the molar mass of hydrogen gas, my one normal cubic meter, and I can get that one normal cubic meter of hydrogen gas is equal to 90 grams of the stuff. So 90 grams into my compressor, 90 grams out of it, one normal cube into the compressor, one normal cube out. This brings me to my next point, reactors, or anywhere in the process where the composition of the gas changes, like a distillation column. Now where normal cubic meters are super useful in doing mass balances where pressure is changing, there is a downside. When the makeup of a stream changes in a process, that is the composition of the gas, normal cubic meters are not conserved. And that is because of what we were doing earlier and working out how much hydrogen is in a normal cube. We used the ideal gas law, and in this we saw that a normal cubic meter is a function of the number of moles of gas. Since reactions can cause a change in the number of moles of gas we have, and hence the average molecular weight of the gas, even though mass is conserved across a reactor, the number of moles and the average molecular weight are not, and therefore nor is the normal volume. Let's take the water electrolysis reaction, where we start with two kilomoles of water, we shock it with our magical renewable energy from mother nature, and then we get two kilomoles of hydrogen and a kilomole of oxygen. We've gone from two kilomoles of gas to three. Two kilomoles of water is equal to 45 normal cubic meters. On the product side, three kilomoles of our products is equivalent to 67 normal cubic meters. The average molecular weight of the stream has changed and therefore so has the normal volume. Remember this says nothing about the actual volume of any of these streams because that's a function of temperature and pressure, which we haven't specified. And that brings me to my final point for you to take away. Notation. I freaking hate it when we write normal cubic meters in this way. According to the SI system, which is drilled into all of us at school, this is a Newton cubic meter. I went through a phase where it irritated me so much that I used to put a little subscript N next to the M instead, just so I wouldn't talk about Newton cubic meters. But this isn't correct either. A few years ago, I wrote to the BIPM, who was the controlling body for the SI system of units, and asked them what is the correct way to write this. Their answer was you never try and modify the units of a value you are reporting. So both the large N as well as my rebellious subscript N are invalid from an SI perspective. What you're supposed to do is add modifiers to the part that is describing what value you are reporting. They gave the example of something like power. If we want to report power P and give the maximum value for power, we would not write P equals 10 kilowatt max. What we would write is P max equals 10 kilowatts. So we shouldn't try and write flow equals 10 normal cubic meters per hour. We should write normal flow equals 10 cubic meters per hour. While this is systematic and correct, it doesn't feel like it puts an end to the way this unit is written. There's just something convenient and also effective about using it in a space where everyone knows the notation. It makes it unambiguous that you are talking about normalized, not actual flow. You'll just have to make your piece with whatever way you see it written.